general public or WSU uh, visitors here today because this was announced on the uh, WSU news that uh, Aziz can make this presentation today. So welcome to our non-regulars here. So Aziz Makani is um, uh, actually he's uh, an engineer. He's got a master's in electrical engineering. He's got an MBA. He's got a long and very successful career in high tech stuff. And he used those two together, high tech and stuff. <laughs> And uh, about two years ago, he had this window of opportunity uh, to, to pursue another kind of dream he's had for a long time, and that was uh, his uh, application is as a referee for a soccer. He's been doing that for a lot of years, and mostly with um, younger children up to, I, I guess, in high school, probably does more than that, but kind of dedicated to an edutainment uh, kind of approach to make it fun and educational for kids who learn soccer. And he had this dream of uh, creating a board game uh, and also electronic game, but right now we're talking about a board game. And so uh, about two years ago, we started uh, putting this game together from his mind and uh, with the graphic designer getting this thing set up. And uh, now, I think as of this morning, he's the number one Google what, uh, search. search on uh, soccer games uh, in the world. So I'm going to turn it over to Ozzy. He's got a nice presentation and plenty of time for questions and answers after his presentation. Thank you, Terry, for that glowing uh, introduction. Uh, I feel honored to be here to share with you my experience, uh, my, my, my journey of Kickshot. Um, as uh, Terry mentioned, this idea kind of evolved from uh, something that I, I do uh, refereeing. What I noticed was that the kids struggle with things like, how many of you, first of all, how many of you uh, have either played soccer or currently played soccer? Please. Okay. When, um, kids struggle with some really basics like throw in. When you throw in the ball, you have to have the ball all the way back, both feet on the ground. And they often do some, you know, some interesting ballet moves when, uh, when they do that. Um, instead, of, instead of having both feet on the ground, they have the leg up or you know, all sorts of uh, funny things. So I thought, you know, if I could create some, a, a game out of it that's illustrated, uh, that hopefully we can see what and how to do it properly and also have fun playing it. So this is the result of it. Uh, what I want to do today, Terry, uh, can you see this okay? Because I can turn the front light off. Is it all right? Can you hit the slide presentation? Slide yeah. show. <laughs> so what I want to do today is to introduce introduce where the company has been and where it's going. Uh, it will be very brief. And then the next thing that I want to share with you is some of the traditional funding sources and some of the sources that I have tapped into. And the, lastly, I want to talk about cost and pricing considerations so that you recognize you know, what goes into pricing the product based on the cost. Um, many of you or some of, you, some of the people that may, that may be saying, you know, my business is different from creating a board game, so none of this will relate to it. All I, all I can say is that many of these things will actually relate to it. There is a, a lot of commonality in whatever business you do, um, so trust me, you will see a lot of things that, that cross over. Um, so where the company has been on a timeline is in March of 2012, it's truly late, late at night. I, I do do a lot, a lot of thinking at night. So an idea came about, and I've already shared with you how, what the idea is. My idea originally was just creating a board, a, a, actually a, a card game that could be, that could be soccer theme, you know, just kind of, I, I thought, if it was something around like maybe a no, no more complicated than UNO set of rules. So when I took the, the original concept out for testing, people said, well, if you're going to do a, a soccer board, soccer game, you should have a board. So my whole idea kind of went and kind of grew from that. And it's been a wonderful journey creating the, the rule set based on the input and feedback I received. So. Um, from between March 2012 to February of 2013, I worked very diligently on creating the prototype, several different prototypes. This is one of the prototypes. 
And then this is an earlier version of it. And uh, then it kind of evolved into this, which is the pre-production version. And then the final product looks like this. There's not much different, but there is some between this version and that, such as the QR code is in here. If I find it, QR code is here. The age, age group moved from four to five year old. And then uh, in June 2013, I received the first production unit, so I scrambled <coughs> to go out there and try to market it to the, the basic market that I thought would be where I could get the traction which was soccer tournaments and uh, soccer venues. And I quickly noticed something that I didn't really predict, which was I was getting a lot of sales from older people, like grandparents, uh, looking for gifts for their grandkids, something that's different from uh, gifts uh, such as a, a video you know, product. So then I had to make a, a small little pivot, which was to move into the, to try to promote the product into the, the older, gen, older generation. So I'm pretty active on the AARP um, the community to talk about the product and try to, try to uh, share my experience there. So, um, and then uh, for this year, where I'm going is I'm looking for licensing opportunities and what I call as um, looking for institutional customers. That means schools, um, MLS um, opportunities with the organizations such as MLS to either private, li private label it or license the product, um, after school programs, so that's what my focus is. While I continue to develop the retail channel, I don't want to completely divorce myself from it, but because the retail channel is important, uh, it's actually <coughs> helped me get through the first year, uh, but I also want to go out and look for institutional customers. Thanks. So, uh, in terms of funding, these are the tradi four traditional uh, funding sources that you, you could he you hear about, the four Fs. The four Fs are founder puts in some money, family puts in some money, friends put in some money, and then the last of all, fools put in some money. Um, I, you know, I'm not going to place anybody here. I, I, so, what I've done so far is the first three bullets. The, the first three bullets have contributed to it. But the way it's ha helped me is creating a, a pre-prototype, then to this level and this level. Every one of these steps have added to my credibility, showing the resilience and showing them that I'm making progress. And so every time I, I can demonstrate progress, they're willing to put in a little bit more money and I'm able to show it to friends and they're putting in a little bit more money. So, you know, while the while family usually puts in money because they love you or, you know, they, they think that you, you can succeed, but also what you should recognize is that families are sacrificing a lot for you in that this may actually affect, you know, being the other person, their, your spouse or whomever would be, would be the only bread earner while you have, while you're pursuing your passion here. So you need to be careful and you need to be responsible and be dedicated and demonstrate to them and hopefully give them some benefit out of it. Um, and similarly with friends. Now with respect to friends, let me say this. Where I benefited is not only money but also the friend I uh, have also uh, friends and advisors, I would say, can provide to you in kind benefit, such as advisor like Terry is a small business development center advisor. He's been able to actually give me a lot of ideas and suggestions, made introductions to me, and, you know, help me get some exposure on the internet through articles, um, classes like this. So lean on them for in-kind, in-kind uh, contributions to your programs um, with respect to friends. Don't always count on money. You, they might be able to contribute in other ways. I have another friend, for example, that's donated uh, furniture for me, such as tables, um, donated uh, a tent for me to be able to show it at, uh, at tournaments. He hasn't given me money, but hey, 
you know, those are the kind of benefits that, and because they trust you and they believe in you. So, um, and fools, I won't go into it. And then the next level is venture and angel funding. I have not pursued that yet. Um, the, the, the last thing that you probably have heard about is crowdfunding, and these are the sources, and some of whom are goodwill, uh, they because they want to, they believe in your project, they may, they may have donated, but one thing about crowdfunding that I will say is that 60% of the crowdfunding money comes from your own family and network. So if you're going to pursue the crowdfunding like Kickstarter project, Kickstarter program, trust me, you will need to lean on your, your um, network. Because just putting out a, a uh, uh, Kickstarter program doesn't mean that your money is going to roll in. You're going to have to help uh, your network spread the message for you and contribute. Next slide, please. So here's where I want to spend some time is um, cost. Um, the next few slides that I want to show you is where the cost generally comes from. And I've categorized them into development cost, manufacturing cost, um, marketing cost, sales cost, and they quickly add up. So unless you're running a charity, you really need to be sure of one thing, and that is, what is the figure of merit that you need to do, you need to have to survive and to make it a sustainable business? And what I mean by that is how many, what is the factor of the cost that needs to be your sales price? So let me, let me um, take a, a small little poll. If I was to sell this at $25, and, and you don't have to give me an answer that's right, or don't be afraid of it. If I want to sell it for $25, which by the way is the price, $24.99, how much do you think the product cost needs to be in terms of factor? Go ahead. Uh, cost of goods sold plus your margin, whatever you want your margin to be. Okay, so what is, what, so if I was to say cost times two, three, four, five, how much do you think this would have to be? Uh, Maybe like twice your cost? Twice? Okay. Anybody else do you want to take a chance? Four times. Four times? Okay. Okay, three? Okay, that's fine. That's good. Um, I have an answer for you, but let's wait until the very end. And see if your answer will change as a result of what I'm about to show you. Okay, in terms of development cost, one of the one of the smallest one. But an important one is <coughs> registering your name with the state. It's a one-time fee, but it still comes under the cost. The next thing that I've had to spend money on, and a lot of it, most of the money, has been with the artist. And rightfully so. I mean, he has to make a living. And I was fortunate enough to find a, an artist that's local. He is very talented. You know, he created some beautiful art. And he and I worked <coughs> together really well, so it was a really good partnership. But he was paid uh, on an hourly basis, and uh, I paid him for not only uh, creating the, the images, but also getting a, a license from him. So I have the rights to the characters to create the, whatever novelty products that, uh, that will come out of it. Um, the next two areas are trademark. I have trademarked the cake shot name, um, and also copyrights, and the domain name registration. Next slide, please. Manufacturing cost, this is another major area that you need to be aware of in whatever you decide to do. That is on the manufacturing cost, I've had to pay for um, cost for producing the box. There is a uh, template that they use. It's a one-time fee. And that, that also comes under the tool charge for the box, tool charge for the board. There's a tool charge for, so they, you know, they, they have to make a living. So it's only fair that they um, charge you for all those. And sometimes you might be able to get a manufacturer, manufacturing partner that's willing to participate with you, but I didn't pursue that route. I, you know, I wanted to pay off and not have to give up my equity, but sometimes you might find a manufacturer who's willing to do that with you. Um, sample charge, shipping charge for prototypes. In this case, I was, I'm getting this manufactured at, um, in Taiwan and uh, shipping charge for production costs. So it's a lot. 
it starts to add up. So in shipping charges, because it's coming from offshore, these are typically what's put into it. Duty, <coughs> house bill freight, I mean, there's a whole laundry list of charges. They add up, believe me. Next one. Marketing costs, domain name registration, you've seen that, web development. Um, I engaged a web developer, um, but I do, once he created the template, once he created the basic um, website, I have been adding more content to it. I mean, I've been adding more blogs to it, so my website is really, really active. But I still mean, I still keep him, because from time to time, there are things that I have to lean on that, that I don't know much about. You know, like for example, Google will change the tricks, you know, about how they index, or how, how they do certain things, and uh, you know, they'll start showing things like, oh, there's an error on your website, you know, the, then you gotta, you gotta figure out, why is there an error? You know, you freak out and you try to scramble to try to get an answer. So I have maintained his services. Um, business cards, marketing flyers, copyrights and trademarks, display banners and buttons such as these. These are all part of the, the marketing cost. On the sales cost, last year I did some fairs. Um, uh, I did some uh, craft fair. I did a, a craft fair down in Lewiston. But one thing about those kind of affairs that I did some tournaments. Um, one thing about those that I was able to leverage was the fact that I'm a soccer referee and I have connections with the people who are the tournament directors. I was able to get the fee waived. But if you can't waive the fee, you need to make sure that you know whatever you put into it, you at least get back some of it. So at least you understand what the ROI is before you, you engage in, in, a, in a, an event like that. I was also lucky enough to get um, presence at the uh, Moscow Mall for nothing, um, and also at some of the local merchants for nothing. So, you know, you, you want to try to at least leverage those. Um, the next area is um, the, the products are sold on Amazon. So, with Amazon, it's been a wonderful experience. I knew nothing about how to sell on Amazon, absolutely nothing. You know, but, so for the first few months, I was pretty hesitant about going down the path because I said, oh man, I gotta do registration, I gotta do this, I gotta do that. But really, they make it pretty easy. Once, once you get on it, it's pretty easy to register, to uh, get, get the, uh, and it's wonderful. <laughs> once you get your product in there, it is. But you gotta, you gotta really maintain your website. You gotta make sure that, that your website has good content so that people will recognize it get the word out, and then it'll go to Amazon. So from the website, they can go to Amazon directly. But Amazon charges you money, so nothing not for free. Um, next, please. So here's the answer to your question, to the question that I asked. So 4X, whoever says 4X wins a, wins a button, so be sure to get it. Um, <coughs> needs to be at least four times. And if you're not, four times the cost. Believe me, you'll be out of business. It won't be a sustainable business. Now, going back to the product and the price, the cost from the manufacturer is X, right? So if your price is fixed, in this case, I decided that it had to be $24.99. So the sweet spots I decided was were $24.99, or 1999 or 14. So that leaves very little, very little margins you're operating with. So you can't really mess up. I mean, I wish that the price could be much higher, you know, $45, like some of the specialty games are. But this is not a specialty game. This is a game that's considered a, you know, a family game. So a family game, if it can't be 1999 or 24.99, you might as well wrap up. So 4x is a, is a, is a good, good target to set. So what, my point here is that you need to identify what your price is and then work backwards from that and what your cost needs to be. It's, it's pretty high. I mean, the 4x is pretty high. Um, final thoughts for you are develop your network of friends, family, 
and establish your credibility before you would even launch, you know, consider launching your endeavor because a lot of people can contribute to you, contribute to your services, and you're going to need them all at the very beginning and throughout your journey, you're going to need them. Um, it'll be your advocates, such as, you know, when I go into Terry's office and I see a kick shot game, that's the best advertisement I can get. Um, I also have a bottle of vodka. <laughs> <laughs> but the vodka is one of your clients too, right? <laughs> Develop the viability of the business, um, ex you know, and, and really open your arms and accept the friends and families who are willing to provide you in-kind services. In-kind services is amazing. You know, they, they will be your advertising, they will be your marketing sometimes, they will spread the word on Facebook and some of the social network, and that's how the word gets out. The next one is, remember, kickshot.org is the website. Go to the Facebook and click like if you want, and I think Terry has something to say about that. Yeah, if you would like uh, to earn some bonus points, and if you feel like you want to do this, I mean, do it, don't do it. But um, I think I can offer a bonus point for liking and maybe four more for saying something, if you want to. But again, you know, it's a bonus point, so it's totally optional. If you don't, not interested in the game, not interested in doing that, that's fine. And Aziz will track those, because I don't even know how to use Facebook. But he'll tell me who's, who's doing that, and I'll just record it and let you know. I'm on several different, um, some different social media, Pinterest, um, uh, Google Plus, but I figured that Facebook is probably one that you, you're all engaged in, so that's why I put Facebook in there. And uh, if you have any questions, by all means, the brochures and flyers are here. There's my contact information. The easiest one to remember is my name, period, my last name, at kickshot.org. And in spirit, in keeping the, with the spirit of, uh, of uh, the World Cup, it's coming in less than 110 days now, a friend of mine came up with this tagline, which I thought was very amusing, very clever. You can read that. So I guess it's going to be in view? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, I think that's the last slide. That's it? Yes. Oh. I kind of went through this really fast. I didn't want to throw a whole lot of numbers at you. Um, I just wanted to give you a flavor for what the cost variables are that you need to be aware of when you're trying to price your product. Um, so if you have any questions, I'll open up for questions. Yeah, is there any way that you're planning to capitalize on the World Cup coming up? Um, my family thinks that I should go there <laughs> to, to Brazil. Um, I need to think about if, you know, a campaign. My current campaign, a marketing campaign that's, uh, <coughs> that's along the, the, um, uh, the World Cup theme. And, and the, the one that my friend made is uh, this banner that we go into the retailers that they can put out. So that's the that's the one thing. And then this banner you'll also find on the home page. And I'm getting some traction on Google. Uh, what was the biggest challenge for you going from having just an idea to the point you are at right now? Like, what was the where did you take the biggest leap? In? <laughs> My biggest the, the the time that I spent was uh, writing the instructions, and I'm still not completely satisfied. You know, I had people review it, I was getting headache. And I said, no more. <laughs> you know, but I had some re a, a good friend, a neighbor. She, she was an elementary a special ed teacher. She reviewed it, and she gave me some really, really good uh, feedback. And just completely, re almost completely redid uh, the, my original instruction. Um, and that's probably, so I'm completely not totally satisfied with it. So I have an FAQ, a frequently asked question tab on the website that people can go to, and you can uh, I encourage people to go to that. Are your uh, e-commerce sales higher than your retail sales? My e-commerce is definitely okay. higher. <laughs> Amazon is definitely higher. It's amazing. You know, I regret that I didn't send them enough of an inventory because I sold out two days before Christmas. And so I missed out on the, I missed out uh, on the last, in a minute uh, purchases, and I also miss out on a few uh, after Christmas sale because the next time the inventory got to them was January 2nd. So I missed out on the window, but it's, it's starting to pick up again. Um, and so, with respect to Amazon, 
a few costs that you need to be aware of is that you can ship them any inventory you want. They'll keep it, but they'll send you a bill. <laughs> yes. Is your game in English only right now? It's going to be on English. Okay. Yes. But your goals, I'm assuming, to, to explore foreign markets as yes, well. Yes. Yes. Very good question. I, I, um, I'm speaking with uh, <coughs> with uh, two people from Saudi Arabia that they're in Moscow to uh, do marketing in, in Saudi Arabia. And the website, you know, I get hits from everywhere, everywhere. It's amazing. You know how the website is getting some amazing results. I want to mention just two other uh, resources that you use. Uh, the Office of Commercialization, they take uh, intellectual property and bring it to, uh, to commercialize it. And the patent attorney, uh, uh, Travis Woodland, is helping with, uh, with copyright and trademark. There are things that Aziz and I had no clue you could trademark or copyright. Uh, and other things you can't, but he, he's just excellent. So if any of y'all have ideas and are building goods and that's another resource that's free to you as students. Well, who, who owns that IP? Is that is that yours? Yes. And, and does WC give royal or give no, a royalty no. arrangement with them? No, he he just he just provides that service as you know to let you know what you can do. If you are a client of the commercialization office, you have to be a student, faculty, or staff. And he's not right now, he's, so he's, he couldn't be a client. But you all have that access. You can go and, and uh, get you know, real hard advice from the But it's, it's a free service. Have you looked at moving manufacturing <coughs> closer to you to cut down on shipping costs or no? I mean, I, I'm embarrassed to say this. I really, I mean, I pleaded and begged the US companies to come through, but you know, first of all, I really had to plead and beg to get even a quotation from them. And many times they would respond things like, oh, we're on vacation for the next two weeks. Like, hey man, don't you have another person who's doing this? I'm really anxious. And the last thing about the US manufacturers is that they will say, well, how many hundreds of thousands are you going to buy? Oh. <laughs> so my experience with uh, international uh, manufacturer, unfortunately, has been extremely positive. Uh, they are very prompt. I, I would be emailing them. We did all we did all of this through email. I would be emailing them, and within minutes, I would get a response. They've got the manufacturing process down pat. It's awesome. And, uh, do you have like a warehouse, or where do those get shipped to? Oh, it's very good. Ah, this is one of the uh, family sacrifices. Is that currently my garage? <laughs> 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 yes, but. Here's the hopeful thing. Because I've managed to advance this through, um, because I'm able to demonstrate that, hey, this is real, I've been able to get a friend, i.e. a neighbor friend who's wealthy enough that he's willing to put in up to $50,000 for the next order. Plus, he has a warehouse. Plus, <laughs> they um, import products from all the uh, Far East countries, so he'll cut down the shipping costs like over two thirds. It's amazing. Wait, question. So, other, do you have any other expansion ideas? I guess uh, I saw some up let's there. See. The product line. The product line currently includes motivational posters, which features a character, a biography of the character, and a, and a uh, motivational message. So there's different ones. Well, this one is Lionel Messi. Um, this one is uh, Pele. Quotation. So you get the idea. Um, and then I've been able to uh, create, and these are pretty quick turn products, you know, based on the characters you've already created. I created a, gym, a set of dinner place fans that comes in a, a package of four. You get the idea, showing the characters that they might actually love. The only regret I have about the dinner place fans is that one of the reasons I created this game to begin with was to show the kids how to do throwing, and unfortunately I didn't pick a throwing character, but that's easy to find. <laughs> and I've also created a, a, a dinosaur pack, but I don't want to market the dinosaur pack until I'm successful with this current set. Uh, okay. Set of products. Did you do um, market analysis? Because those characters are all pretty, they look to me aimed at 
little kids. Yes. Um, whereas I wouldn't think these guys would be interested in playing even with a dinosaur. That's a really um, good question. Um, the premise of this game is that the kids can grow with the game. And so the instruction set offers three sets of three sets of instructions. There's a little kid's instruction that's probably good for between five to eight year olds. And then there's a, a ne next set of instructions. And it's all part of the game. So they don't have to go out and buy an expansion pack or anything like that. <coughs> they uh, select a, big, a small set of uh, cards. And you can play the next level, which I call a warm-up game. Um, and then the, the third set, which is for adult version, which is uh, inclusive of all the cards. So yes, I agree. Um, the characters are somewhat childish looking, but trust me, the game is good. Because I agree. <laughs> Uh, I actually forgot my question, sorry. Okay. I had two and I forgot them both. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get one of these. Um, what about home, this is edu educational and entertaining. I know you were talking about uh, looking into home school. How, how is it entertaining? How is it educational? Um, Other well, than how yeah. to play soccer? Yeah, that's a really good question, by the way. Why is it so... Why do I think that it has educational value besides beside, uh, educating the, the soccer community? The reason I think is because, one, you can show the characters and you can show the kids to uh, hopefully motivate them to illustrate. They, they can see, hey, you know, if I'm artistic enough, maybe there's a market value to it. Um, they can take the um, concept idea of the, taking a concept into a product uh, how do you do that? So the kids can be shown that this is how you, the, the steps that I went through would be ideal for them to, to recognize that this is how you do it. The next thing is there's, I've incorporated statistics into uh, the game. So roll of dice, there's risk and reward. So if you're trying to teach kids on applied statistics, they can teach them to do that. And then the last thing that I have is on the website, each character has a a very, very endearing um, set of biography. They have a unique name, and uh, my, da my daughter-in-law actually created this. Um, so really, uh, go visit the website. I I'll read to you. Um, so they can act so the teachers can actually um, motivate the kids to learn about a country or a place where they came from and the culture of the country and the you know, foods they eat. So let me read to you this. Uh, Leonardo is the name of the character, Jaguar. Leonardo, famous for his fancy footwork, comes from, I can't even pronounce it, Nyogin, Argentina. His all-time hero is Diego Armando Maradona, and thinks that Patagonia is the most beautiful place in the world. So you can see awesome opportunity for uh, teachers to say, hey, write me a project about Jaguars. Um, learn about animal science. You just never know, you know, how and what would motivate a kid, you know, uh, so they could learn about animal science, they could also teach them about uh, the country where they are from, and this is one thing that I'm doing is that when you scroll the cursor on the character in the near future, actually it will open up and tell you a little bit about the character, uh, about the, uh, the animal, and it will also uh, tell you about the, I have not incorporated that yet, but I have basics. Have reaching out to any big name soccer players for endorsements or anything? I would love it. <laughs> no, I have not reached out to them. It would be awesome if I could get that. Yeah, I, I, I'm everything right now. You know, I'm the, I'm the web maintainer, I'm the social, social, direct, social media director, marketing, sales, everything. So, and Kyle has been very helpful. I mean, Kyle actually created the original um, website. So that's a really good idea. He's, he's talked about it a little bit in, uh, with uh, universities as well. I think uh, in Oregon State or University of Oregon is a proposition. So it's something that's on the, on the things to do. Yeah. But there's about a jillion things to do and time to do about 10 of them. Right? Yeah, I wake up every morning yeah. with a completely new agenda. <laughs> Whatever, please. Okay. Go ahead. So it kind of sounded like you wanted to like move in the, dire the direction of like putting like Messi and those guys into it, but how would that like make the MLS feel? Because they're not associated with MLS, so why would the MLS endorse the game when it kind of has an international feel to it? 
I, I don't know, you know, if they can mutually uh, mutually coexist. You know, I don't know that they are mutually exclusive either. Um, I don't know where that will lead me to, but uh, I'm throwing the dice out there, and hopefully, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna get some traction. I don't know the answer to that. Uh, kind of going with that question about the international appeal, I know like for our generation, or like how old we are right now, like that FIFA, like the game FIFA for Xbox is like, is like huge. And so, have you ever thought about maybe if this gains traction, you can make a board game that's like, it's like affiliated with FIFA, maybe partnership, and you can actually include characters like Messi and Pele and like all those guys? That'd be awesome. Yeah, that'd be incredible. Like, yeah, that would be. I've not written to FIFA. I mean, like, occasionally I go there and I go, ah, and I get distracted. <laughs> Now go to MLS and not getting distracted, but um, so these are things that I would love to do. Uh, one thing that I am doing, um, speaking of in-kind uh, services, is that I'm engaged with both universities. At Washington State, I met uh, business students, evaluate my um, the project and give me analysis and recommendations. And last semester, it was awesome with Joe Wagner. Uh, Joe, I Harris's, the same class, so the yeah, Joe, Joe Harris's group, it was awesome. At the University of uh, Idaho, I have a, a sponsored projects to do mobile apps, for example. So um, there is a group that, uh, so the level one will be um, on uh, Google Play end of this semester. Oh, yeah, because uh, we've got the mobile apps with, uh, I love about Xbox. PlayStation. Yeah, Xbox 360 or like PS4, like that, FIFA. It's like one of the most popular games. And like that would also be really neat. Like you were talking about bringing into like the mobile market, where uh, I know a lot, like a lot of younger kids are like into their iPads and stuff, and they have apps. Like you can make it like a like a virtual board game and make it an app. Yeah. You yeah. can also do that. Yeah, and you should you should always ask you know what's your idea for monetizing that. How are you going to make money? And my current vision is that level one and level two are going for free, and level three is for the issue. That's my idea right now. And level one is being completed at level two. Any other questions? Remember, families uh, sacrifice a lot. They don't just give you money because they love you. I mean, that's always a good thing, but you owe it to them because they are sacrificing by the So if you're going to take family money, make sure you're in. So I thank you all, a great audience, and especially as these, for uh, we'll make sure. Uh, and um, anyone, and like I said, I don't know, it depends on you know, what Wednesday is like. If you have a long weekend, um, you know, if you're just sitting around, don't have a soccer game to play on your Xbox, or <laughs> I can't be picked out. You didn't get one. Yeah. Is this the first and last thing for the weekend? Yes.